Hello, you beautiful souls of love and light. Um, I'm coming to you with a live video because I feel this is so very, very important to share. So, um, pardon me, I'm going to take out my hair here. <laughs> um, so, I had a mentoring question come in, and normally what I would do is I would uh, record this and put this on Patreon for our Patreon subscribers. However, um, because of what she said and because of how it relates to all of humanity, and because she specifically asked me, I'm going to read from what she wrote here. She said, if you want, you can write a, you can write a topic for everyone to know and understand uh, if someone is in the same situation. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and address her question here uh, with the intent that this is to benefit all of humanity and my response here rather than writing it I'm actually doing a Facebook live video and um, because I feel it's an important topic for the spiritual path and um, so pardon me while I read um, what she wrote so she wrote to me beautiful goddess um, just as I'm going through healing with my near twin it's something that bothers me is the fact that how it's okay for him to talk to me in the presence of his wife how it is okay for him uh, sorry I read that already and um, not because of any jealousy or controlling or any symptoms that maybe I used to have but they don't exist anymore they're free from existing anymore and um, but for the fact that how can a person or the soul handle two or more relationship situations at the same time parallel and be okay with both of them in my case I feel about this is that uh, how I feel about this is that it's one unconditional love that can only be shared with one person name multiple partners for some reason for me that has always been that so the reason I'm writing you is that he called me and of course knowing he is at home he said yeah I'm here in bed with my beautiful wife and she is making me some tea I know that a uh, moment either is okay to just do whatever he feels in his soul but at the same time is like how can you be loving two partners or more on a soul level and then this is when she said I could write about this topic so I'm doing this video instead so I'm going to share with you some of my story um, in this and so that you can relate because there's um, the soul aspect and then there's also the earthly aspect so the soul aspect which you're experiencing um, and from the earthly aspect is remembering the culture first of all and um, he is in India and still in some ways the older culture exists where you have a um, arranged marriage and that arranged marriage is nay based on love and there is also the propensity to have multiple partners either a mistress or mistresses or other wives and um, I've seen this dynamic happen several times before I've been connected with several men in India both who still fancy me and who pursue me actually um, on Facebook thinking that um, whilst I was in a relationship recently and also with my twin soul and um, off and on for the last 12 year um, and even back when I was married many years ago I had Indian men come to me and it's acceptable in their culture depending upon uh, where in India and um, that it is okay to have more than one person in their life and um, man or woman what have you most of them you know uh, it's the men who then have a woman a divine feminine goddess or goddesses either as mistresses or as other wives um, and having the one main wife um, and so he was coming from that context from the earthly perspective from the soul perspective what you say here actually is correct and um, in terms of I'm going to read exactly what you wrote again um, for you it's only one unconditional love that you can only share with one person name multiple partners um, and for some reason for you it's always been that well it's always been that way for me as well now this is free from being about indoctrinational programming as some people from an earthly perspective will be with somebody and um, because we've been taught in society to be monogamous quote unquote and this is neither the case at all uh, from the soul perspective because we come from one soul as source energy so there is only the one 
infinite consciousness. Then when we became twin souls, we are one soul and two bodies. So again, one. And again, one, when it's multiple people. So basically, as my twin soul had once said to me, when you're loving another, you are loving me. Okay. Um, so what he meant by that is loving when I was with another, um, that I'd be loving him as my twin soul, um, but also the one, the one soul that we are in two bodies, and then the one as in infinite consciousness, right? Um, so there are those levels from the soul perspective okay now added to that also is the earthly perspective and this is what I'm going to invite you into beautiful goddess and all the beautiful goddesses here particularly who are listening to this and this can also be for the divine masculine if you're experiencing this with the women and um, however um, it is Mainly, I have seen divine masculine men who tend to do this. Now, I'm going to say this from the outset. Um, what I'm going to share here is free from being about outing anyone or hurting anyone or lashing out or anything else. This is in the context of the mentoring here that this goddess has asked me about. And so um, to also give the earthly balance because what you're experiencing, beautiful goddess, beyond the culture aspect, beyond the soul aspect um, of what I just said, is the fact that this near twin in your life seems to feel that he can have his cake and eat it too. And this is what your life lesson, or as we say from a soul perspective, the soul remembering to be remembered, or the life lesson to be learned, as we say in the earthly perspective, for you which is, what are you going to choose? Now, twice today, <laughs> I have received, and I'm going to pull up here um, on my laptop, I've received, um, and I'm free from looking at comments right now, so if any of you are commenting, please, um, Ken, that I'll comment after this live is done. Um, I've received two things in my inbox today um, from various groups that I'm on, and I'm going to pull them up here and read them because I thought they were so appropriate giving uh, this live that I'm doing here now. Um, one is, the first one that came to me was this one, and it says, the most important spiritual growth uh, that I happen when you're meditating on a yoga mat, it happens in the midst of conflict when you're frustrated or angry, scared, or you're doing the same old thing, and then you suddenly realize, and I would put in parentheses, realize, with real eyes, R-E-A-L-E-Y-E-S, um, in that realization, that you have a choice to do it differently. And this is very key for about what I'm going to share with you next in this regard, beautiful goddess, and for all who are on here that can benefit from this, which is why you asked me to do this more publicly. Um, and the second one that I received just before I was about to go on live here is part of the spiritual work is remembering who you are when triggered. So I thought that was absolutely appropriate for what I'm about to share because this beautiful divine masculine soul who is your near twin, beautiful goddess, um, whilst he's in India and there is a cultural uh, difference and whatnot, he has a perception within him from the earthly perspective that you're meant to see. We're meant to see both the spiritual and the earthly. So I'm going to share with you two different scenarios that I've just been through recently and how I moved through them, which actually goes exactly to what was written about choosing differently. Now, remember, um, for those of you who may have seen my video all the way back at the beginning of 2019, 2019 from a soul perspective is about the year of choice. And I go in depth in that. So if you've not seen that video, I invite you to go to your to my videos here on YouTube or on uh, Facebook or on YouTube. It's also on YouTube as well. Um, but it's about choosing differently, making a different choice. And so I have two and and uh, who you're being. The other uh, quote that I saw: who you're being in the midst of being triggered. Now, for me, I was free from being triggered in a bad way. It was actually a good way. It was so that I could choose differently. 
So what had happened uh, is two different scenarios I'm going to share with you. The first one is with a former business partner who was someone who I mentored for a time um, who I gave um, mentoring to and um, did a loads of mentoring with her for free and um, gave her loads of time and effort and energy, helped her with some videos, helped her with loads of things and we went into business together and had premises for a time. And after a week, before the even first payment for the rent was due, after a week of already being in the premises because the landlady let us in early to get things sorted and, and beginning and whatnot, um, she spent uh, calling me, I think, at like half nine in the evening, and I ended up spinning on a messenger phone with her until like half two in the morning or three in the morning, something ridiculous like that. And she was crying to me that she may have the money to pay the rent with the underlying manipulative expectation that somehow I was going to be paying the rent that month. Um, and then she went about saying, oh, I ended up getting it, but I had to pull it from my children's savings and, and my ex-husband isn't paying me and all this other stuff. Well, she proceeded to do that the second month. And when it happened the second time, I knew that there was this expectation that somehow um, there was going to be this issue all the time even though she tried to assure me that that was the case and I knew there was some manipulation involved and whatnot. So I pulled the plug and I went to our landlady and said, look it, she doesn't have the rent. And um, she understood the situation, although she was angry with my business partner, not, not me. Um, and I pulled out of that situation and, and did so from a place of love. As a result, because this woman may got her way, um, we've really had any much contact recently other than just trying to sort a few things here and there um, related to the business, related to me uh, giving her her master teacher credentials because uh, she um, uh, went for her master teacher with me and things of that nature. Um, she's a beautiful goddess, she's a beautiful woman, um, but she's deeply hurting within her to do what she's done. And um, it put me in a very precarious situation and I had to choose differently because in normal circumstances and what I've done with my twin soul before, when it came to money or it came to giving him things, I would just give, 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 give and allow him to manipulate the situation. So I've been through loads of stuff with my twin soul, including the fact that he's physically with me right now um, is his form of manipulation. Um, and I say that free from judgment. Um, again, I'm free from judging anybody I'm sharing anything with in, in this regard. It's just their behavior and they're coming from a very deep wounded place of things that need to be healed and have great compassion. And I see them as fully healed, but they may see themselves as fully healed. So I had to make a choice to choose differently. And so I chose differently and got out of that situation from a place of love. And um, she and I are still in contact, friends on Facebook and whatnot. But because she was unable to get what she wanted out of me um, and out of the situation, she's taken a step back and we used to be very close. And I was close with her girls and things of that nature. Then the second scenario is the one recently with um, the relationship that I just broke up. Um, with. I broke it off with the man in question because um, immediately after the switch on um, that evening we had a really great time. Um, we had come through here to mine and from the beginning I had a hesitation about him staying here to begin with. He kept talking about us living together and um, he went and put relationship status on Facebook which I was all right with um, but it, things were moving way too fast and there was underlying manipulations that he somehow thought he was going to be living here with me and um, because he's done this with other women before and he confessed to me and so at the switch on after the switch on he, he came through here and proceeded to manipulate me in saying that oh if we were ever to break up or anything were to happen and um, where you would leave me or what have you and um, that would be the end of my life. Uh, basically saying he would commit suicide, that he had tried committing suicide the year before or something of that nature. And um, I turned around and had to choose differently and say, straight up, I'm not responsible for your life. And um, he didn't like that. 
then he threw out me because I sent him an email related to um, distraction and the telly uh, because I know he watches the telly and uh, it was related to our conversation about how he was saying I it's a distraction I'm going to take myself off of that and um, he had a go at me about that and um, I sent it to him in excitement saying oh I thought this would help you because it was in the context of what we were chatting about um, and it was nothing other than that and he had a go at me saying that oh am I trying to change him am I trying to manipulate him blah 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 so the very thing he was doing with me he was accusing me of and this is a scenario I've dealt with for 12 years with my twin soul in some form or fashion from him manipulating my twin soul manipulating me to do a website for him and calling it under the guise of love in which I paid for that website for five years and developed it and um, loads of videos I created and he was always saying do it because of source not love but it was benefiting him and um, loads of things I've been through all of these scenarios before so I could suss this out real easy and I knew this was happening in this relationship then he came through and bought the flat that I helped him to get um, from my former landlady because uh, it was just a wonderful scenario and he ended up being 40 quid short. So I text messaged him and said, right, do you want to just put it through to my account? I can withdraw the money since you're unable to withdraw it. You maxed out the amount that you're able to withdraw per day uh, kind of thing. And he texted me back and said, um, no, you know, the landlady will just have to deal with being 40 quid short. So then later, um, after that switch on and what have you, he proceeds to say that one of the things he was upset with me about was the fact that um, I didn't offer to give him the money, that because we're in a relationship and because I know him, well, I, I know him, he's a near twin of mine, okay, um, and I, um, we are in a quote-unquote relationship, but I had only known him from an earthly perspective for, what, a week, week and a half, maybe a fortnight? Okay, at that point, um, going, yeah, I think it was about a fortnight uh, from November 10th when we met, and this was, what, the 23rd, so a fortnight, right? Um, so um, I said that to him straight up. I said, look it, I said, I've only known you for, you know, a week, a fortnight, or what have you. You've only been here uh, a couple of days kind of thing, and he didn't like that. And so there was a series of other things that occurred um, in which he shared about how he was manipulative um, and a bully and when he didn't get his way. The whole entire time we were um, together, I either had to pay for the two of us or we ended up splitting. Uh, the only two times that that happened was his invitation to me to the symphony, which obviously I'm not going to um, because I broke up with him. Um, but uh, the other one was when I dropped the suggestion that he pick up the tickets for Frozen. He paid for that for Frozen 2. Um, any other time he hasn't. Oh, and I take that back. He did a Starbucks uh, latte. And that was after I put a post out um, earlier that day related because there was somebody else who had come to me about uh, somebody being manipulative um, as well. Um, I'm not your sugar mama, I put in that. And was a channel inspired in 2011 by my twin soul because, again, my twin soul has been doing um, all of these type of underhanded manipulative uh, techniques. Um, and I've seen past all of them. Um, but I was never going to put any time, effort, or energy into somebody else who was going to do that. So on the train um, through recently to an event that I was on, um, he um, sp told me about this manipulation that he used to do. He put it in his Facebook Live and whatnot. And um, so now he's made to um, uh, straight out there in, in bullying and what have you. He's doing it manipulatively, covertly. And um, all the while, he was on my course. So he had given me two of the love offering donations for the course. Um, and he got all the way through to uh, session four of accessing the Akasha. And then um, when I um, didn't do what he wanted, uh, the last straw was he wanted me to go see some um, murder mystery, uh, sorry, murder mystery comedy. And I nicely said to him, it's just name one that I fancy. I'm not into that kind of thing. Um, he's an only child, so because he didn't get his way, um, he messaged me and said, right, I'm not going to do the course anymore. He was also um, trying to, um, and I was part of the inspiration because I gave him some ideas, admittedly so, um, but he was trying to do things that were um, like me. 
he changed his page to say that he was a spiritual mentor, uh, said I was the inspiration for that, which I was because of who I am, but I ain't told him to do that. And um, he started offering inner soul child stuff. Um, and I put a comment on his live saying that, you know, if anybody's interested in the inner soul child, I have videos on this. He deleted that comment um, because he uh, wanted to take it for himself. Um, so all of these different manipulative um, things. And the last straw was um, at the bus, he had said to me that, oh, he has done all of this uh, before and he always had something to fall back on in America, which was all these other women that he would prey on and that he was admitting that he would do that. And he said when he got here to the UK, uh, this happened with the women down south in England, and that um, he lost loads of viewers as a result of it. And, um, you know, wasn't having sessions and this and that because of it. And I said, it's because you were meant to teach the lesson that you're not meant to be doing this type of behavior anymore, um, that you're meant to stand on your own two feet. Um, so he may liked me sharing that with him um, because I wasn't going to allow him to manipulate me. And this is what I meant by this quote here that um, I received. These uh, two, actually, they were photos. Um, the one saying, um, it, it, you know, the most spiritual growth happens when you are actually in the midst of conflict, frustration, angry, scared, um, or doing the same thing over and over again to choose differently. And then the other one is, and the spiritual work is remembering who you are when you're triggered. So I was being triggered, but in a good way. I was being triggered by this man's behavior and this woman's behavior because I was meant to choose differently and not allow the manipulation to go forward. So now he thinks he can go access, <coughs> pardon me, he can go access um, other people's Akasha. So I specifically sent him a text when I broke up with him that says, and by the way, uh, since you were free from completing the course, you are not authorized nor certified to access others' Akasha. Had you completed the course, had you completed it, meaning the course, properly, you would have received a certificate from me. Um, and then I said, I wish you well on your, your path. Um, and what I meant by that was he's not authorized. Pardon me, he's not authorized and um, nor certified by me and the course of what I taught him and how to access the Akasha. Um, so um, I was meant to choose differently. So beautiful goddess, this is why I'm sharing all of this with you, because you're meant to choose differently. This scenario with your near twin, <coughs> pardon me, need some water here, sorry about that. So this scenario with your near twin is a similar scenario with my near twin <coughs> and this woman, what I just went through. It is so that you can choose differently. This beautiful bloke, this beautiful divine masculine man, he may have the most beautiful intentions at heart, which at the heart of it, the man who I was in a relationship with, he was chivalrous in many ways. He was. Um, but there were loads of other things beyond what I'm sharing with you here in this live that he did behind the scenes with me privately that were very manipulatively um, done and then also at dinner with some friends as well and um, that my friends got to see and so his intentions actually had an underlying motivation okay now I originally thought when um, this bloke had come into my life and um, that his intentions were pure the fact that he said he was coming all this way to be with me and that he just wanted to spend time with me and um, I found out that was just a manipulation and um, rather than being true at heart um, and so uh, there were chivalrous things that he did and there were chivalrous things that your near twin did beautiful goddess in your time in India with him um, however, there is an underlying manipulation there that says, oh, I can have my wife, she can give me tea while I'm in bed with her and also be with you. So it's seeing the soul perspective, but also looking at it from the earthly perspective and balance and an integration. Um, just because we're spiritual, then they mean somebody can be a doormat and oh, we allow them to walk all over us. And so this is the life lesson or the soul remembering for you to uh, learn or soulfully remember is to ask yourself that question. Are you willing to be with somebody who is this way? 
Are you willing to be in a relationship in this manner? Now, you have a soul agreement as near twins to be together for the time together, and I've shared that with you in previous session as to uh, what that's about and what those lessons are in, in your time when you were in India and whatnot, and also going forward into this now moment. That said, one of those life lessons or soul rememberings for you in particular is to seriously ask yourself this question. And when I started noticing the manipulations that were going on um, with this bloke, um, I was just like, right, this is my twin soul all over again. Now, not the exact same things, and it was me about me dragging um, my past into the present moment and recreating it in that way. Um, but it was the same scenario repeating itself, and the reason it was is because it was residual energy from the old timeline, as I've done a timeline video about this, um, and it's asking the question, are you going to choose the same old, like this this quote which came through, which was perfect, and when you're doing the same old thing, it said, um, or are you going to choose differently on 2019 being the soul year of choice? So I knew I had to choose differently and um, let this man go in a place of love. Wish him well on his path. I understand why he's doing it. He's an only child. He shared with me, um, as I think he's shared on his blogs and, and videos and what have you himself, Facebook Lives or what have you, that um, his mum, um, you know, a man was always more important. And, um, you know, um, he was pushed aside as a child. He has womb trauma that I helped him in an inner soul child healing session with that I gave to him for free. Um, and uh, allowed him to come through to my um, Divine Masculine God evening so that he could connect with others, um, you know, to try to form a bond so that he wasn't feeling alone um, and all that kind of uh, sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, things like um, I went to have coffee with a friend and the fact that I was down the road from his place, he couldn't ha handle the fact I ha he had to be with me all the time. Um, the evening ended up wor working out perfectly with uh, with friends, but originally it was supposed to be a goddess evening um, that me and my uh, beautiful goddess's friends were supposed to be attending to and he had to come with me and I felt very uncomfortable and pressured as if I had to say yes. So it was all these manipulative things with my near twin and I had to ask myself, am I going to allow this to happen like I did with my twin soul? Because with my twin soul, I was like, oh, he's my twin soul. I love him. And I was in that place of unconditional love and I'm helping him to heal and things of that nature. And when that scenario started to happen again, I was just like, right, I get people come to me because I am a mentor. I'm here to help them to heal. But at the same moment, there's a difference between that and allowing manipulation. And um, so it's coming from the soul perspective that I, he was my near twin, but I had to make a choice. And so this was the universe giving me that chance to have that choice and I chose differently. So beautiful goddess, it's up to you. I can't interfere with your divine free will or divine free choice, as we say in soul. You have to look into your heart and see, ask your question to you. Are you okay? in this scenario because I, free from indoctrinational programming, free from any of this stuff that um, happens from um, an earthly perspective that says we're to be monogamous, um, and there are loads of people on this earth that are nay, and that's their soul rememberings to be remembered or life lessons to be learned, but the true oneness is being one and that collapse of two separate beings and when you're in that place that is unconditional love and that is only with one soul whether it's your twin soul a near twin a soul made it name matters in that sense but it's about that oneness and being only unconditionally loving with that one person now you can be unconditionally loving with all of humanity and all of the cosmos of course but that one intimate relationship is meant to be with the one soul right? One soul as in source, and then one soul with who calls to your heart. And so um, you may have this scenario um, with this gentleman, and again, with the culture involved and everything else that I've shared, you are to make a choice. Are you going to repeat the scenario that you've had with your twin soul, as I can, that's the case, um, and possibly others in your life, whether they've been intimate relationships or nay, in which um, you've stayed on um, being a doormat, um, are you going to choose differently? 
it's up to you. If you choose to be with your near twin and you feel it's worth it, um, then that's your choice. Um, just make sure you're doing it from a conscious place that says, okay, I'm okay with the fact that he's in, in his bed with his wife and she's making tea and, and whatnot. And again, it's nay jealousy because you said it's nay about jealousy because all of that shifted from you. Um, it, it's about being conscious of understanding that you can be with somebody in that scenario. And um, an open relationship is really what it is um, in that respect. And so that is up to you to choose. Um, I can't tell you what to choose, um, nor can source. I can tell you your soul agreement is to be with this near twin and you have life lessons or soul rememberings to uh, remember, uh, indeed, and this is one of them. Um, but the choice is up to you in that respect. And in your Akasha, uh, there is um, a choice that's there that you have made, and it is through your earthly choice that you will make here now that that will be revealed as to the path. Okay. Um, so with that, I bless you and may this help you, beautiful goddess, and may this help all who are involved um, so uh, it, it, that have these types of scenarios in their life. Um, I hope that this uh, helps you and gives you a context to understand um, how to heal and come into integration. And please can or know that I'm always here for you and I love you dearly, as father.